Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, uh, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. Today, we are working on this Chainsaw Poulon Pro PP4218A. And <clears throat> customer brought it in. I've got to tighten up the chain too. Easy adjustments. Uh, customer brought it in who also belongs to this 70 year old alice chalmers tractor that we are gonna tear down and replace and rebuild and said he couldn't keep the thing running so i spent i don't know 20 minutes or so uh getting it started doing some carburetor adjustment on it trying to get the high and low end to set and the bottom line is <clears throat> it's a couple years old it's been setting for a while and I just couldn't dial it in all the way. Uh, the insides, we pulled the carburetor apart. The inside uh, gaskets, the flappers and all were pretty well dried out. So, he said, hey, can we go ahead and put a new carburetor in it? And I said, of course. It's actually a pretty good chainsaw. And most people don't realize that Poulon Pro is the same as Craftsman um you know half a dozen brands out there they're all exact same machines so i ordered a new carb kit for it which came in the mail let me put this down see if i can make this tripod work these things are a pain in the butt sometimes um new carb kit came in new carb liberator here Came with a new filter, new spark plug, uh, new primer bulb, new fuel lines, gaskets, fuel filters, blah, 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 blah. The fuel lines on this one are not too bad a shape. So we're going to start by taking this top cover off. There's a couple of screws in it. It's been a couple of days, but I think there's four, one, two, three four i'm gonna pull those out take that uh top off and we'll show what it looks like inside so there's three and they're just torx bits it's a t20 and the hardest part's not being able to see down in these deep dark holes but you just pull those out the top comes off <clears throat> what you heard click was the chain break being put on just to move it out of the way to get the case out now i usually leave the the screws in the case um, just so i don't lose them when they're here on the bench i'm gonna see if i can move you to the other side i spent half the day cleaning up the shop because i've been working on so many projects lately and it's still a freaking wreck but like me old pappy used to say, if your shop's not a mess, you're not using it. So this is what you see underneath of here. When you take this case off, this cover, there's a little plastic air filter cover here that just pops off. And then there's normally an air filter in there. <clears throat> now the air filter on this is dirty. It needed to be replaced. And that's why we ended up going ahead to do this. Uh, the chainsaw ran fine. After I got all the adjustments, there's adjustments here on the side for high and low. And it takes a special carburetor adjustment tool. You can get these on Amazon. This one has uh, 24 splines on the inside. It's for Poulon and Craftsman. And then I've got another one here that's a half moon with a square edge. And that's for other brands, home light, stuff like that. So uh, the reason that we decided to go ahead and pull this was because I got the thing to run and idle and, and everything was all right. But then as soon as I put the air filter back on it, it was all out of whack again. And he is planning on using this to cut down a tree in his yard and then he's just gonna put it up for sale and like me he doesn't like to pass problems on to other people 
So for the cost of the carburetor, he wanted me to put a new carburetor on it so he knew when he sold it to the next person there'd be no issues. Now there's just two screws right there. They just come right out. That's a size eight millimeter. And then what you have here is this plastic cover. This whole air filter assembly comes out. Okay, don't lose your choke lever here. And you've got your throttle cable here that goes on the side of the carburetor. Sorry about that. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but you have a throttle cable here. So when you pull the when you pull the handle, the throttle cable moves. Now that's just a Z bend. So you should be able to just pop that out. Sometimes you need needle nose pliers to get it to twist. And when you take it out, you see where it goes back in real easy. So we're just going to twist this out of the way. Take it out. Come on now. It's just the Z-bend, see, Z-bend there. And it just goes back in there. If you get lost, and you're not sure where it goes later on in the project, there's only one place on the side of the carburetor where it can go, and that's here. It can either go in the bottom or the top, and the top is actually a bigger hole than the bottom. And I don't know if it'll go in, see, it won't even go in the bottom one. It has to go in the top one just goes in like that then when you pull the trigger we're good to go so now that this is slid out of the way you can take this off if you want to but we've got wires and stuff on this side and I don't think I'm gonna bother these things are sometimes a pain in the butt and if there's no reason to take them out then there's no reason to take them out if your, throt if your choke lever, that's the blue one here, if your choke lever falls out, it goes on the side of the carburetor here. Okay, the opposite side of the carburetor from the throttle. There's your throttle. The choke lever goes here. And it's also just a Z-bend. And what it does is just move the butterfly valve on the inside. It goes right in there. Easy to get out. Easy to put back in. Just be careful with it when you're taking it out that you don't break it. But you see it's just a Z-bend, that's all. Right there. And it just goes back. It'll go into the new carburetor. Right there. Easy enough. And we have our choke. That's just all it does. So, all I have to do now is take the old carburetor off of these two studs. Okay. We're going to take that out of there. I'm going to take these fuel lines, okay, and I'm going to swap them over to the new carburetor. I'm going to put it back and together in place. Okay, <clears throat> so we pulled the old carburetor out, okay, and this line goes to your primer bulb, and this one came off. So I'm going to start by putting a new line right there. And what's going to end up happening is going to be a pain in the butt. But I'm going to have to feed this back onto the primer bulb. I'm going to do that off camera. But it just goes right down there to the primer bulb. The other line comes off here. Be careful. It's pressurized. When I pull it off, fuel squirted. No big deal. Not going to hurt my bench. Now on the back of this carburetor is also this rubber connector here. You just take that off the old carburetor. Put it on the new carburetor that goes right here on the top of the intake and that's going to be it i'm literally going to put this fuel line here i'm going to put the carburetor back on where it belongs making sure That that rubber bushing that we just changed goes over the housing the way it's supposed to. I'm going to reattach this line right here. 
back down and it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to get to but i'm going to reattach that to the primer bulb uh, i may actually have to remove the primer bulb in order to do it it was a pain earlier but i'm going to do that then i'm going to put my throttle cable back on and i'm going to put everything back together the way i just took it apart okay now if you can see that get that light out of the way this is the new piece of line that i put in and all i did was use my little flashlight I took the line and my needle nose pliers, I went down in there and I fed it back onto the primer bulb. And it is just that easy. So now, I love my rechargeable light. This is actually the headlight to my electric bike. Uh, but I use it every day in the shop as a flashlight. So, we've got our boot on the back. We've got our fuel line on this side. We're going to take and put our fuel line on this side. And I made it just a little bit longer than the old one. Just so I had a little bit more room. When I went to put the carburetor back on. Now our fuel line's back on. Oops. Oops. I did it again. We're going to take off the old gasket because we got new gaskets in the set. And look at the gaskets and see. Because this set, on this gasket we have a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom and these are your screw holes. On this one we have them diagonally in our screw holes. And it came with another gasket. And there's just one at the bottom, not one at the top. I don't like that. I can't like that because we have an intake we have a hole at the top and a hole in the bottom that I can see it neither one of these match so you know what I'm gonna use the old gasket it's not all torn up it came off in one piece it's not hard so I am gonna leave that old gasket right there because the new gaskets don't have the proper holes in them and I don't trust it when that happens when you buy carbs especially for machines like this when you buy aftermarket carburetors, they often say this fits this model, that fits that model. Uh, so when you buy, when you get the new carburetor, look at it as opposed to the one that you just taken off, and make sure it's pretty damn close. And then on the rest of this, we should be fine. Now, when I look at that, we've got these diagonals here. This is all the same. That's all normal. So I'm not going to worry about that. We do have a gasket for the outside. I'm going to put my choke back. And that is just a matter of, like I said, feed that Z-Bend back in. It's hard to see in here sometimes. I'm going to feed that back through without breaking it. Come on, you were already in. There you go. Don't force it in. Wiggle it just a little bit until you get it and make sure you're good oops that was supposed to be out here like so so that i'm clear the only thing left here is my throttle cable which if you remember has to go back in there let me put that in there real quick okay i put a new gasket on here i matched the ones with the diagonals to the diagonals that were there i put our throttle cable back in and now it should be just a matter of feeding this thing back down, but without forcing it. And it feels like something is kind of holding it, and I'm not sure why. Right, we got one in. Why does it not want to go back on? So let me wiggle this thing back on. Okay, the reason it was having trouble going back on was because there was an electrical wire stuck where it got twisted. So you need to make sure that those are all completely out of the way. And the throttle cable was twisted. So after you get it back in place and you know everything's good, just work your throttle a little bit. I see that the throttle's working just perfectly. Now we can put these back. 
and all we've done is reverse the project process we gotta make sure that our choke stays in place because that little sucker wants to keep coming out doesn't it get a flasher we're not bending it or anything and then it's still where it's supposed to be and make sure your choke works that's the lower butterfly you want to make sure that that's still working and after we get it a little funny so after we get the other bolt the other nut on where it's supposed to be the outer housing doesn't have anything to do with this so let's get this back on and tight and then we will check sometimes you have to put it on and take it back off but I want to make sure that that choke is working it's in and it's out there it goes so in and out in and out in and out and if you look right there when I work the choke that butterfly will open see it open back up that's halfway choke that's all the way choke halfway and off so whatever was going on from putting it back together had, was a little bit twisted I didn't force it but I gave it just enough pressure to make sure that we were clear of everything so that's good that's good all this is back on all we have to do now is put on oh that doesn't fit awesome so i'll have to trim this okay and then i'll have to put that back on and we'll have to put the plastic back on but for the moment i'm going to prime it up and see if it'll start all right now i gotta sneeze of course because i just fired up the camera I got it started. I had to fiddle with the high and low just a little bit to make it good. And let me put it back down where I can start it. Choke back on it halfway. That's low. So we went the wrong way. Start again. So I am just going to do a final tweak on it. You don't have to watch that. I don't want this video to be too long. When you chomp on that trigger, it shouldn't bog at all. It should go 0 to 60 and right back. So I'm just going to mess with it a little bit more. I'm going to put my filter on that I cut. It's going to go in there. Then the plastic's going to go on here. Just like when we took it off. Okay, filter goes in plastic goes on and then this goes back on just like this and you can still adjust the carburetor through this little open here on the side so you don't have to worry about that hopefully we did not lose our screws because somehow this stupid cover got flipped upside down while I was messing with this thing there's two And if I lost one, I just got to look for it, that's all. There's 
sure it's oh it's in there. And that's it. And that's where you adjust with your splined tool. Alright, so you saw how everything got buttoned back up. I went ahead and adjusted the chain here. So we're good. Loosen that. Make the adjustment. Tighten it back up. She should fire up. It's on. friends is carburetor 101 how to completely change a carburetor on a pull-on chainsaw and it's pretty much on all chainsaws with very few differences so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button lately my videos have been going very very well one of them broke 22,000 views yesterday uh, and the channel is doing great. I have plenty of watch time hours and I'm getting new subscribers. I'd like to break a thousand this month. If I do, I'm going to do some kind of a giveaway. <clears throat> so hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends. Come back and see us. We'll be doing another video real soon. And don't forget, I have minimal tools. In fact, I've been collecting tools the last few months. But I have minimal tools, and if I can work on this stuff, you can work on this stuff. Don't be afraid. Give it a shot. See you soon.